And this just into our Live 5 newsroom. Court officials say what appeared to sound like a man's voice made a call to the Colleton County Courthouse today during the Alec Murdoch murder trial. The man said there was a bomb in the judge's chambers and then he quickly hung up. Shortly after that, Judge Clifton Newman announced a brief recess and ordered everyone to leave the building. Our team coverage continues now from Walterboro, where Raphael James tells us law enforcement acted quickly after receiving that bomb threat. The courthouse square was emptied in a matter of minutes and the courthouse was emptied as they came down those stairs right behind me and then law enforcement on the scene came to us here in the media and we had to leave our cameras and much of our gear behind to get over on the other side of the street where they said was out of harm's way. We're told that it was a bomb threat that was called in and law enforcement came in and quickly checked the building. We're told that the disruption was more of an inconvenience than anything else, though. Law enforcement and the courts, they say they plan for situations like these, and those protocols in this case were quickly implemented. Again, after a few hours, the all clear was given, and we were allowed back inside and court resumed. Emily Zuhowski was in the courtroom, uh, and Emily, I'm curious to know, how did the jury in the gallery respond to the interruption in today's testimony? Well, Roth, the crowd today for the trial remained constant. It was something we noticed right when we got here earlier this morning, about an hour before court was supposed to resume. We saw the longest line we've seen since the beginning of the trial of people trying to get into the courtroom. And that crowd remained despite the events of the day. And it was certainly a day in the court like no other, with the Carlton County Courthouse receiving a bomb threat. An employee with the Carlton County Sheriff's Office told me this is only the second time they've ever received a bomb threat here. It all happened just as sled agent Brian Hudak was beginning to take the stand. Security whispered something to Judge Clifton Newman and then Judge Newman dismissed the jury to the jury room and told the courtroom we had to evacuate. It was really pure confusion at that point. The crowd moved out of the courtroom pretty quickly, but not with an intense urgency or, or overwhelming panic. Once outside, we were asked to get to the other side of the road until we were cleared to come back in. And that long line that we saw to get into the courthouse earlier in the day at the beginning of the day remained when we were told we were able to come back in the courtroom once inside right before testimony was about to restart. One person told me it sounded like a cocktail party inside of the courtroom. So to me that that felt like there wasn't that much fear or confusion as we went into the rest of the afternoon of testimony. Roth. Thank you very much, Emily. And when court resumed, the state was able to continue to question um, people who were very close to Alec Murdoch's alleged financial misdeeds. Uh, one of them, uh, a colleague who had worked with him for nine years. Blair Sable has more on what she testified about. Baroff, we've heard from others who worked closely with Alec Murnock, but none like Annette Griswold. She was his paralegal, and she says that she was on to him about some funny business with the money, but she also says that she that he actively lied to her to keep the scheme going. Griswold testified on the stand today that Alec Murdoch made excuses about missing finances and confusion over the personal account he was using named Forge instead of the real account the business used, Forge Consulting. Griswold stated that she often worked on the more complicated cases in the office and for months she was told that the money had been taken care of in one of those cases until by chance she found out that wasn't true. A check kind of floated like a feather to the ground. And when I bent over to pick it up, I saw the check and what it said and had on it and I instantly became very upset because it happened to be one of the checks from the Ferris case that didn't exist. 
Well, that check she's talking about had money on it that was supposed to be shared with attorney Chris Wilson. That's Murnock's best friend he partnered with on cases. And last week, he gave some emotional testimony outside the presence of jurors. And as we continue the testimony later in this week, we are expecting to hear from him very soon as early as tomorrow. Groff. Thank you very much, Blair. And things ended uh, very early today in court, usually go to about 530. Testimony wrapped up today about 440. But one thing we can say, those people who came from as far as two hours away to witness this trial and they got here early, say they definitely got an experience that they came looking for. Reporting from Colleton County, I'm Raphael James. Back to you. All right, Roth, thank you very much. Definitely an eventful day in court. Remember, you can follow the trial in real time. We will continue to stream it live starting at 930 tomorrow morning when court reconvenes. You'll find it at live5news.com. You can also find all the trial developments under the Murdoch Cases tab on our website. Our reporters and digital journalists working to wrap up all the developments of the trial each day for you. And also make sure to download the free Live 5 News app to get alerts about any new developments in the trial, you can scan the QR code right there on your screen or download it from your phone's app store.